Happy New Year-ish, New Year's Eve. Thank God 2020 is coming to an end, right? Um, it's cold where I am, and I'm inside, obviously, and I have some cats with me, so I don't want to keep this too long. But I, I wanted to do a post, um, a post, a video about uh, my short story collection. I have some, I've had it available for a few weeks now. It's called Beast on a Bike, and this is the hardback. Again, I don't, Amazon prints nice, lovely, readable copies. They're just large. I don't, so I just get with these large sizes. That's all I, um, uh, it's highly readable. Anyway, so this is the cover, and I said how these stories are sort of like, um, Kind of beginning stories in a sense. I wrote this manuscript in 2006 and they're kind of setting a template for later works. Not all of them, but you can see. And I think they're a really good collect. This is a good collection for, um, you know, young writers starting out and you want to, you want to just read some, uh, some narrative. Again, you know, I did the best as, the best that I could. I told, I said I don't enjoy going through old work. As work that was written before 2007 for me is really painful to go through and edit and clean up. And I still, even now, I'm going, oh, I could have gotten rid of that oh or that of, and it's just endless. So maybe someday when it becomes available in a, you know, official copy, I will do such, but this is the collection and I just thought I'd read a small snippet it's not very long and that way you won't get too bored but um, it's sort of a precursor to um, it's called the salt and it um, if you read my longer novel um, sounds with song much of that deals with the ocean and being on a boat so this is a very short little excerpt here a short story not very long at all, kind of a, a snapshot that uh, I, I didn't insert in the longer novel, but expanded upon, just so you can see the ideas. So um, here is the salt. I fell towards some other dream, and for that time sleep made me extraordinary, and yet I fear I've forgotten how to remember anything. The seawater percolates deep within the underworld of stone, while below me volcanoes are going off, reacting and dissolving the metals and minerals owned by the seafloor. Staring towards space, not realizing I existed to the outside, I could see far past the window. The clouds rose in their plumes of blue-black ink, sketched across the subtle canvas of sky, too deluded to descend into ghost-like fog, and I thought then how quiet it would be amid transparency, with the ability to transcend all forms of topography despite limitations in height or geography. The motion of water gives my body life, moving me through all that moves it as I reside, listening to its incessant lapping, hard and heavy against the pier, the weight of my frame extending over sands and curves of wind-shaped stones, far past canyon sandstone eroded by ancient seasonal floods, past the boundaries of suffocation, where trees get lost in their spacious ranges, or where swamps dwell in impassable places. We brought the boat out several miles from, from shore, where around us stretched vistas of blue-green waves that broke without hesitation against the base of its belly, and where below that the waters loomed after having taken in the seemingly weightless glide of its frame, holding our boat up effortless, effortless, effortlessly as the liquid received at will. We thought this would be a, a good spot as any to lay the anchor. So, do, so two guys did the honors, while the rest of us looked on and watched them stumble with its metallic weight, holding and then pushing it over into the sovereign deep, of which we believed to be only 30 feet. Once they realized and the splash was heard, the anchor fell ever gracious, gracefully 
to the sanded bottom, larded with kelp-filled shells. Thirty whole feet, but from up top, the scene appeared a whole lot deeper. Miles of upper waters, the view stretched onward, till the very crust of far flat waves overlapped with that of the sky, and from so far a space, one could not tell there was any divisor between. I grabbed my fins and snorkel and followed fast. The wind was picking up and making me chilled, and so I jumped with several others over the side. It had been years since I last snorkeled, back when I was four or five and coaxing my sneakers over the Florida coral. You wear them so you don't slice your feet, I remember my dad telling me. How buoyant I was, how weightless, and now despite my age and, my, and any excess muscle, to the impact of salt, I had gone unchanged. Upon impact, I felt the slush of waves, and then I was under. I opened my eyes through a foggy mask and found my feet hovering above as though my bottom half longed to stay afloat while my head and arms longed to ferry the rest of me down. I desired this, yet still I held the fear of heights. It was only 30 feet, but I was much higher than I'd be willing to stand on any land. It took a few moments for me to realize there was nowhere I could fall. And once my eyes caught steady, they glanced over the form of a small waking shell. I began to feel a little calmer as I watched its small feet try to extend to a walk, dunking in and out from several schools of fish, swimming through them in an unintentional yet exhilarating interruption. There was a range of coral beside that nearly reached surface and beside that a, a coated Christ standing vigil upon a salted pillar at the bottom of the sand. His hands held outward open and empty, while small fish swam between the crevices of his eyes. How vacant they were, these eyes sheathed in a film that only the underwater world would know of, this sane and seemingly sinless world. Had I said a prayer today, I hovered there a while over this relic and thought it funny to be lighter than God. The statue was much heavier than I, and no number of waves could tear it from this very spot. Kicking my fins, I attempted to lower myself deeper to this underwater place. Holding my breath, I dizzied un under and kicked and kicked. The temperature must have dropped a good 15 degrees. The water felt cool and new and fresh on my limbs. It felt like a place that no sunlight had found, no human forms to come and shed themselves among the deep primal lives of trenches, yet it was still within the range of 30 feet. But to me, it felt deeper than energy. Bubbles swelled, appearing small as clear balloons, exiting my lungs and all my functions of cellular exchange. Vacuoles of stored food, small blooming organelles of life was I, as I managed to drop down low enough, just enough to touch one finger is what was allowed before the force of salt took hold with, this, with its insistence and fisted me upwards in a burst of unrelenting overwhelm. Air. Gasping, I am impressed with what I have done. It is not much when one thinks of trenches and what old bones live within, or the brash smoke that swells in a knot below the deepest sea parts exuding its heat to the world in a fury. But why must we be so brief with our exchange? This is the imagined world, a world one finds, however, while drowsing in a graceful globe of sleep, ferrying that thought towards far away, yet mingling our minds within the matter of what we call life. Beside me, ages were roaring past, and I found myself hence, Time had not delayed me, and yet still there I was, captivated by such supple surface as that of the sea's ceiling, keeping on in wave and in wonder of what eyelid lives below that soft, damp rim. Okay, so that's just a brief little essay snapshot uh, called The Salt, and if you listen to the words, 
it's about when I went to Key West or Key Largo rather and um, I was snorkeling there is a statue of Jesus at the bottom of the ocean it's maybe 30 feet below the boat and his hands are up like this and I thought that was just a very interesting uh, magical moment to be swimming among that with the fish and then you can kind of see not just literally with how I expanded upon this in my Sounds with Song novel from 2007, I wrote that a year later after this, um, but also the religious themes that I've since written about, um, The Vanishing Spider, um, Still Amid the Lotus, um, my last novella that I did on Joan, Joan of Arc, That Which Devo Dissolves, or The Fairy Tree. So I um, incorporate nature, um, religion, ideas, spirituality, being, existence, all these things just sit within that moment. And um, so this is, an, that's an early version. As I said, you know, as I read that, there were definitely some things I would change now. I felt some of the language, while a lot of it was strong, still I felt some moments were kind of clunky and again, perhaps in the future were this, you know, released in a bigger domain, I would tweak some a little more, but right now you get the general idea and that's, that's what's important. So this collection has a good number of tales. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, eighteen. They're not very long though. You know, they're very kind of short, some character heavy, dialogue heavy. Um, it's only about 132 pages. Um, but this is available on Amazon. I think $7.99 for this hard cap copy. This is huge, like a ma uh, magazine, but um, the ebook is uh, $5.99, and really for paper for this prose, you don't you only need, really need the ebook. I don't think the paper copy is really necessary. I think the paper copy is necessary for poetry. So anyway, I just wanted to share that <clears throat> my voice is going out. I can't read for very long. So um, wishing everyone a happy new year, and I will uh, be around in 2021. More videos, more topics on art, um, planning to do future writing, um, Enneagram videos, just new stuff, new information, new um, content. So I thank you for listening and wishing everyone a pleasant New Year's Eve and um, beginning of 2021, hopefully will be much better than 2020. So thank you for listening.